First question I want to ask is, um, we're getting ready, we're getting close to the Olympics. Now, when you turned professional, you were still a baby in boxing terms. And you talked about, I'm not interested in the world mm. amateur championships. I'm not interested in the Olympic championships. Do you ever regret that you didn't spend more time? You know what, Steve? I don't. I don't at all because I used to always watch boxing on ITV. I used to always watch it on Box Nation. I used to watch your shows when I was only little and... And seeing all the pro programs, always, always used to go to watch pro shows as well. And it was all over news, to be honest with you. I never used to really go watch amateur shows or to the highest level, for example. So going pro, in my head, was all I really knew, to be honest with you. It was all I knew and it was all I wanted to do from, from the moment I ever set off, ever put on a pair of boxing gloves, really. So no, I don't regret it at all. But you, were, you must have been realistic at that time and knew that, knew that it was going to take a good few years to get anywhere close to the top of the domestic level and then move on to world title because you lack that massive amateur pedigree. Yeah, no, of course, of course, like I said, I didn't have a big amateur career. I had a very mediocre amateur career, being, being honest with you. And I knew it, I knew I was very, I'm, I'm a realistic guy. I've always been realistic with myself, always have been, always will be as well. And I knew that in order, like you said, to get to the top, I'll need to, to shine perhaps more than others, for example, and I think I'm doing that. So you put yourself under pressure? Yep, you, you could say pressure, but at the end of the day, it's not, it's not really pressure to me because I know where I want to be. I know what I've put in the sport. I know what I want to get out of it. I know what my family have put in, what my uncles, what, what everyone behind us have put in. So I'm, I'm very confident when it comes to that. That drive, how, where do you find that drive from? I mean, what drives you? I mean, how have you found it? Because I've, I've found it strange from your very first fight, how focused you were. Yeah. Your second fight, your yeah. third fight. You, you know, you're focused like you're getting in and out of the ring with world champions. Where do you find that degree of focus? Yeah, I think it's just been naturally like, installed in me. Like, my uncle was a boxer and he's, from, from, from a very young age, he's always, he's always installed these um, ethics in me of just being concentrated, be, yeah, being concentrated and always aiming to be the best, to perform the best, to train the best and just do everything, no matter if it's boxing, no matter what it is, it could, it could just be your, your regular job, just perform it to the best of my ability. So I think that's where that's come from. What's behind the shift to America, to the Goose and Jim and, and, and the hookup with Ricky Thunes? What's, what's behind that? That came from, that came from nowhere, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell you what it was. We kept it a bit quiet, but two and a half years ago, Ricky come over. It was over in uh, London for some charity show he, uh, he had a fighter on. And Taz called me and he goes, listen, Ricky's here. At the time, I didn't know who Ricky was. So uh, he goes, come down, we'll do a session with him, see how it is. Because Taz knew he's been to the top of the sport with Khan. He's, he's seen it, he's been there. Because Amir Khan had been with Joe Goosen yeah, and, exactly. and Ricky had been involved with Joe. Exactly, yeah. And then I went down and done a session with him and I done, I think it was a 45 minute session with him. And I kid you not, in that 45 minutes, I learned a hell of a lot. It was like starting from scratch again. And then I went back and this was before I won the European title. And I was like, kind of thinking, like, I've got a European title fight and I've just learned like the basics again, what the hell's happening here? And then obviously I cracked on a bit, got the wins and then Taz sat me down and he said, um, he goes, if, if you keep doing what you do, he goes, once we get the sponsors on board, we'll, we'll, fly, out, we'll fly you out to America. And, and yeah, I've been lucky enough to get the sponsors out, yeah, out in Dubai who have helped me and, uh, and made the transition. And here we are, a week away from flying out. But there's a lot of fighters that get sponsors. There's a lot of fighters that chase their dreams to America mm. and start working with someone. But you went out four months ago with not a massive party, just a few of you in the team. And you've still got to prove yourself once you get to yeah. those American gyms. What was that like? I tell you what, you always hear about it, right? You always hear about, yeah, you go to you go to Freddie Roach's, yeah, the sparring's mad there, and you can like it's crazy. Until you actually go there and do it, you don't understand what level of severity it actually is. Like the first day, I walked into just Justin Fortune's gym, and I sparred an Olympian there. Um, he's had a few pro fights as well. And to be honest with you, I was a bit shocked. Like I wouldn't say I got my head punched in, but I did get my head punched in. If that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, no. And then um, it was good. It made me like I went home that night. I remember, and Ricky called me, and he goes, "Like you got to remember, you've come here for a, for a reason. You've come here for a reason. You ain't here to mess about. You're capable of mixing it with these kids. And if you got someone like Ricky telling me that, and I always thought Ricky's he's honest. He's honest as anything with me. And he told me, he goes, you've got the ability. And then." Went, kept going back, back there, back there again. I'm just doing better each time. And then we'd go to, from there to Freddie Roach's gym. 
spar the top kids in that gym, holding my own, and just sparring all over and sparring like just like random people as well. Yeah, it's interesting. I want to ask you about the random people because you know we all know you can go over and spar with like Amir Khan did. He went over and he sparred with Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah. But I'm interested in those guys you've never heard of who yeah. get in the ring and suddenly they're chasing you all around the ring. What's that like? Because you're unbeaten. You're unbeaten in twelve. Yeah. You've got sponsors in Dubai. <laughs> you're in there and some kids you've never heard of with with shoes that don't match and yeah, gloves yeah. that don't match is chasing you all around the ring. It's literally like that. I, I swear to God, if, the, if, the, if half of these kids had the financial support, they'd be world champions. Champions, these Argentinians, these Mexicans, but it's good because at the same time they're hungry, they're coming to take my head off, and at the same time I have to, I have to hold my own with them. Do you know what I mean? The, the only way you get respect with them is just literally trying to just take them out, and that's that's what I've been doing. I've got to learn to be more savage. Honestly, it's more savage out there, but at the same time you're learning, so it's good. I've been, I've been enjoying it, and yeah, just I can't wait to, to perform. Now, I've talked to a lot of people here today, family members of yours, friends of yours, and they've all said the same thing. They feel you've transformed slightly, mm. you've changed, you've become, uh, it's a cliche, but you've become a bit of a man yeah, since, yeah. You, since you came back. And do you feel different? Do you feel like a different Hamza? I feel like, I'm, I'll tell you what, honestly, I feel like a totally different Hamza. I'm not saying come fighting that you're going to see yeah. a, a total different fighter. You'll see an improved fighter 100%, but I think being away from home for four months, just having that, that time to reflect on who, who I am and, and what I actually want. Do you know what I mean? Like coming home from hard sessions. Focus your attention. Exactly. And and just being there with my old man and Taz. And just, it's just us three, do you know what I mean? You really see what actually goes on behind mm. behind these cameras, behind behind the sessions and everything, and the, the, the lights and everything. So, yeah, I've definitely felt like, I've definitely found it. I'd say, I'd say I definitely I found a new love for the game. And the bond, I've watched you here at this gym this evening. I've watched you work in... With, with Ricky and so much of what you're doing with Ricky is yeah. just hit you and him talking, yeah. sitting, talking yeah. after you've done some sessions, sitting on the floor as you're stretching, yeah. talking. How have you found that? Because that, that's not very British, is it? Yeah, Let's tell yeah. the truth. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of it, but it's not very British. Yeah, it's new. It's definitely something new. It's <laughs> definitely new. I've not had that before. It's the first time I've actually had someone who's directing me out, outside the ring as well. I'm not saying I'm a wild child or anything, yeah, but... Sure. He's like you see it. You see it yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean? you see it's it focus. You're looking in his eyes, and yeah. he's looking in your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can go on the pads. You can look a million dollars on the pads. That everyone can. Do you know what I mean? I can. You can, for example. Anyone Easy. Can, Don't but... get carried away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, listen. It's good. It's good because it gives me a whole new aspect. He's been with with the top names of the sport. You know, yeah. he's been with Corrales, everyone, and he brings a whole new aspect to my game. And to be honest with you, this is like probably 1% of what he's going to teach me in the next few years. So if that's only 1%, you can only imagine what the rest is going to be like. So we're moving on now to a, a different stage in your career. Let's look at the, the, the domestic front. Let's look at these the British fighters. Troy Williamson's yep. going to fight uh, Ted Cheeseman for the British title. There's all sorts of other fighters out there. Anthony Fowler, Scott Fitzgerald, Josh Kelly, if he moves up in weight. Bradley Skeet's even around. Yep. In an ideal world... Yep. If we concentrate on the domestic men, who would you like? I don't have any particular name I, I want. Whoever I have to fight, whoever they put in front of me, whoever Frank puts in front of me or says, this is who you've got to get past, I'll get past. Mm -hmm. No matter what I've got to do, I'll get past them. But listen, the, the, the division is crazy. It's, it's really it's crazy. It's a brilliant division. No one's actually totally dominating. No yeah. one's actually, there's always names like, say, if he beats him, you always got an another name of thinking, yeah, yeah. He, he, you, know, you know what I mean. Yeah, of course I do. So it's a brilliant division. It's a brilliant division and hopefully a division I'm, I'm going to take over very soon. Are you at that point now? You're 22 years of age. You're not that wide-eyed kid, you know, wide -eyed kid mm. anymore. You, you, you're serious now. You've had four months in really hard gyms in Los Angeles. Are you at that place now where you're going, yep, I fancy it now. I'm ready now. I'm ready. I want to fight these guys. I want to get these real fights. Yeah, of course. Listen, I've always said, I've got time, but I ain't got time to waste. Do you know what I mean? I ain't got time to waste. That's partly the reason why I wanted to go to America because, you know what I mean? You've got so many people nowadays building up their record. Padded, it's a padded record. They're building up. It's almost a fake record. Do you know what I mean? You're fighting people who ain't even tested you. So I thought, listen, I want to go out to America and I want to see where, where, what, what level I'm actually at, what level I'm actually at. And Ricky's seen it. And he's told me, listen, I can, I can get to the top. I just got to do what he says and keep, keep working on it. That's really honest, and you've been honest in the past. Are you ready now, though, for any one of those? Let's say in four months' time, three or four months' time, would you be ready at this point? Because I know, yeah. you, as you say, you are honest, and I, yeah. and I mean that. Yeah. Would you be ready in three or four months for any of those names that we mentioned there? Yeah, one hundred percent. If if you ask me this, I'd say 
eight months, eight months or nine months ago, I'd be like, mm, I'll, maybe I'll one take more my fight. time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not the route I want to go down. Nothing like that. But now they now put me in front of whoever you want to, whoever any of them names you just said, any of them names, and I'll crack on with it. Wembley Arena. Yep. Which is a great old arena. Not quite the Royal Albert Hall, but it's a great <laughs> arena, if you don't mind me saying so. How much do you know about your opponent? I've seen him fight a few times. I've seen him fight a few times. He's a good mover. He's coming to win. It's his big opportunity. It's his golden opportunity on BT Sport. It's his first big televised fight. So he's coming to win. He's coming to take everything away from me. If I ain't watched too much of him, like I said, he, I've done it before. And it's turned out to be a totally different fight. So come fighting out, I'll figure him, off, uh, figure him out after the first round and just crack on from this. So late last year at Church House, when you had that, that, that fight there, Carl Frampton was a bit shocked at what he saw. And in fact, he could barely contain himself. He said, this guy's definitely going to win a world title. What, what, is, what do you make of comments like that by experienced double world champions like Carl Frampton? Do you know what it was? Coming out of that fight, when I first saw it, I was a bit shocked because to me, that wasn't my best performance. I could have done a lot better than that. I know that. And for him to say that based off that performance, it's a massive compliment, it's a huge compliment. But at the same time, I didn't want to dwell on it too much because it's all good saying it, but at the same time, I actually got to get it done. But like massive praise from, from him, from David Hay. You can't really go wrong to punch you, Steve.